Well, I, John Turner, uh, I don't want to say that. <laughs> so, uh, what, what did you do during the war then? Uh, uh, well, uh, war broke out, but ended in 39. And at that time, I was, I was working in a. a uh, we were making concrete air raid shelters. And I presumed I would be exempt, but I wasn't. And I was called up on. 4th of April in 1940 and I enlisted in, in Cromer in Norfolk and my first memory of, of Norfolk was PT on the beach in Jim Beston. It was freezing, absolutely freezing. However, and they said, no, no, did you drive? I said, yes. Motorcycle, yes. Right, RES2. So I was admitted uh, in, in, uh, with the RES2 service corps. Uh, we had just a basic training in Norfolk, issued with the tropical kit. And uh, after a month or two there, right, done tropical kit, and we marched down to the station. We thought, all right, this is it. But no, we went to uh, Troon in Asia on on the golf course where we were cut there. We were there about three weeks, uh, right, pack your kit, so uh, right, this is it. And so on the train again, we finished up on the entry race course. And a, a week or two there, same old thing. However, th this time we were really moving. You know, we went to Gurok and on the Clyde, uh, when we got onto the Queen Mary, and that was the original Queen Mary before it was uh, made into a troop ship. So from from there we we set off, and they said we almost went to America. We were escorted, by, well, unescorted, but with two two other ships, and eventually we finished up in. Uh, in um, Ceylon, called at Cape Town, went ashore at Cape Town, Simon's Town actually, I went ashore. And we finished, as I said, we finished up there in Ceylon, it's now Sri Lanka, and, and we put it on a boat. And it stuck to high heaven. It was terrible. And it was a cattle boat. We were on for three days and when they took us off and put it on another one. I always remember the name of that boat. It was the Caragola. And so we, we sailed up the Gulf of Aden into Egypt. And in no time at all, we were up on the desert, and that was bleak. But at night times, it was bleak, really, really, really cold. We were in uh, baby hacks, just a hole in the ground with a little tent over the top. Another recollection. I, we're to, to, to a baby hack. And, uh, and I, I was on my own at first, and, and then there was I had another story came in, in, in with me. I remember, I remember his name, Jimmy, Jimmy Hoff, I called him. And to me, it was an unusual te place. He came from Aspie de la Rouge in Leicestershire, I think. 
Uh, however, we opened the desert a, a, a few months and the, the, the food was cooked on an open burner with a hole in the desert. And half, half of our, our platoon were, went down with dysentery because of the flies and the food and being out in the open. And I finished up in Cairo, in, in the general hospital in, in Cairo. And when I was well again, went back to base. And from there, I went in to Khartoum in the Sudan. And that was a, a lovely trip, we called it. That was one main dam, a big dam, we called it Karnak, Luxor, to El Shalal in, uh, in, in the Sudan. Eighty, eighteen hours across the desert in a rickety old train, and the seating was just wooden lust. And we knew it. And anyway, we were in Khartoum for a year and a half. And uh, eventually I was attached to the Sudan Defence Force. And I was teaching Sudanese soldiers how to drive in lorries. And they'd only driven the camel before, and that was some job, since they didn't speak any Arabic. But I found the best bet was to find the brightest of the bunch and, and concentrate on him and get him driving, and then they uh, transfer the knowledge. I mean, there, there's no equ equivalent of uh, a lorry term in, in, in Arabic, as I, I, I knew. And after a year and a half there, oh, while I was there, we used to have to, uh, have to wait. I, I, I was detailed to go on what they call the milk run, and actually drive a lorry across through what was the, it's the largest native city in the world. And they said, whatever you do, don't stop. I said, what about breakdown? Oh, what well, a hard look, mate. <laughs> but uh, I, I did that run regularly, uh, uh, but every three or four weeks, to a, a dairy farm to bring the milk back for the garrison. And as I said, we, we, we taught the uh, Sudanese to drive. Then, then we moved back in, into Egypt, and, then, and they were the first Egyptian troops that have ever been to Egypt. They were never allowed in. But when we got to uh, into Egypt, the base, it said, it said "Right, that, that's it. You, you, you're finished now with the Sudanese. You've got to familiar with them." You know all the teachings and the, and and uh, so I was transferred to another unit, and and then while we were up on the desert, they said, "Right, change of course. You it's, it's either the RAME, the Royal Mechanical Engineers." Oh, the ordnance transferred. So I decided on ordnance. So I, I, my, my job was in a unit which carried all spares for all, all the vehicles, everything. It was classed as advanced ordnance because we were always just behind the lines. And, and eventually, went all the way up through Libya into Tunisia 
and when when that campaign was over, we finished up uh, back in in Egypt, and we were uh, at the foot of the pyramids. There was a, a wooden, wooden encampment about twelve big big huts. We were six weeks there, and while we were there, I climbed halfway up the pyramid, which was not allowed. But anyway, it's surprising what it's a little little bribed us with a guide, and, and we, we, two or three of us, we climbed about halfway up, and, and then we looked up, we looked down, and I thought it's a really long way down. It's time we were. So we turned back and went back down. However, as I said, we were there for about six weeks. And then, then we were on, on board ship and we went across to, to we were, uh, Sicily. And we, were, and we were stationed in Sicily for about six months, I think. I must have been a bit of a daredevil at that time because there's been in a Mount Etna there, and they said it's interrupted for so many years. So three or four of us have decided we went and we climbed to the top of Mount Etna, right to the top crater. And about six months later, it erupted. <laughs> and then you oh, just, just to go back to the Sudanese. That's a, that saved my life because the, the, almost the whole unit, unit of Sudanese were wiped out. They, they were driving uh, petrol carrying vehicles. It, they weren't bowsers because all the petrol were in huge cans. And the, and the whole lot were wiped out. So that, that was the number one time uh, my life was saved. Anyway, back to, you just stay on Crete about six months and then across the straits in Italy proper. And, and if, oh, I can't remember how long I was in Italy, quite a long time. And I never went up past Naples, which it is quite a disappointment. Uh, from the front, it looks lovely, but the, but the back streets are terrible, absolutely terrible. Uh, after uh, a month or two there, we went back to Barry, on, on the other coast. And we, 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 I think things were winding down by that time, and eventually we came back to England. And it was after what about three, three, about three and a half years, and, and that's how I came to be in Doncaster. I, I, I came back and was. Uh, and was in Nottingham, a big uh, base for all, all vehicle spares, and and, and then I, I was a South East of in Doncaster. I was posted to Doncaster, and, and in, in Hot Lane in Doncaster, there's what was the old Lido skating rink. And, and that was a, a spare depot for our, our units. 